forum, and Ken would come talk on the forum. And I know he was sounding out some of his ideas that ended up in the book. At the time, we didn't know that, of course, but um, it was really cool because we were all we're all like, okay, that's really interesting. Wow. <laughs> That was Ken. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys were just like kind of mucking about doing all kinds of different things or even doing barrel aging in that? Uh, somewhere along the way, way back when, and, you know, I think it was, I don't remember if it was before Ken's book or right about that time. I know I'd worked with a local winery and, you know, I'd been pestering him for ages trying to get a couple used wine barrels because we'd already done a number of bourbon barrels for beer. And I just happened to call and harass the owner again and said, well, if you can get here today, well, well, yes, I will be there and managed to score a couple used French oak barrels that they'd aged red wine in. And one of those sadly ended up getting, you know, some Belgian strong golden thing that was terrible in it and undrinkable when it came out because the recipe was so bad. But the other one, we put a braggot in. And that turned out, you know, we're talking like, you know, sack plus drink braggot and, you know, fairly high on the bitterness to, you know, stand up to time. And it, I thought, was a pretty good effort for the day, you know, I don't think we ever did another barrel aged braggot after that. I think we were sort of burning out on barrels by about that time. I have done my own barrel aged uh, mead since then, but these were big, you know, big size barrels. Yeah. Like the winery barrel was 59 gallon wine barrel. So it took a, a bunch of us making, supposedly <laughs> all making the same recipe. Uh, several people didn't quite get the memo. <laughs> so some slight variations in those recipes, huh? Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, this was supposed to be bitter with hop flavor. Oh, well, I didn't like that. Well, you know, uh, we had a plan. Up the process know? if we use yours. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough. So, what are you making these days? Uh geez, what am I making these days? Got some really crazy ones. I've, I've got a kumquat meat going. Oh, yeah? That's interesting. Yeah. That that, was, that one just about went to the drain. Really? Oh, what, really? What happened? I love kumquat. It? It's one of my favorites. Well, it just, you know, it's, you know kumquats are, uh, let us say, highly acidic. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> and, you know, I pitched. Yeah, you know, it's only a hydro mill, and I, I pitch, you know, appropriate amount of yeast, you know, nutrients, you know, stirred, blah, blah. It's not doing anything. Wait a few days, stir some more. Still not starting. Wow, I'll pitch some more yeast. I'm still not doing anything. You know, I, okay, I'll pitch a different yeast. And I, by that point, I've got, like, you know, eight, eight packets of yeast in this five-gallon batch. It's like, <laughs> what's going on here? Well, yeah. Uh, all right, I, I know it'll fix this. I have some Brett that'll fix that because Brett doesn't oh. mind low pH. <laughs> and it's like, okay, it's still not doing anything. What's going on? Well, I just let it sit there for another couple of weeks and say, okay, I want that for men or bad. And, yeah, oh, I, wonder what, I wonder what it's at. I threw a hydrometer in, and, and in the few days I let it sit, it went down below one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, and the Brett eventually got the message and did its thing, and... So it, you know, fermented out really quickly. Of course, it was only like a, you know, 1075 or 1080 something to begin with. But it's you know, now been back sweetened a little bit, and I'm waiting for it to, to drop a little clearer, and we'll see how that, you know, plays out. Obviously, never to be reproduced again, because mm -hmm. <laughs> even if I wanted to, mm. you know, that, that was a, a little bit of a, what's going on here? I had never used kumquats because I had been trying for several years to get my hands on enough to do it, and finally did. Oh, really? Oh, wow! They're they, they're practically weeds here, and nobody uses them. Like um, people have them as ornamental trees, and they'll just give them to you if you ask them. Yeah, you know, and I had you know I could find them in the stores in Florida when I was down there. Right up until the point 
Well, and I said, yeah, that'd be a good thing to ferment with, and then I could never find any again. So they're really yeah, they're, irritating. They're at the level over here where no one would ever sell them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, you actually, you would actually see them. You would see them in the public grocery stores in Florida. I, I haven't seen a kumquat tree down here in the 17 years I've lived on the beach. <laughs> oh wow! At all? I know there's. A, there's a lot of them growing in, uh, I think, up more towards the Panhandle, more you know, north of Tampa somewhere. Yeah, that's another country as far as South Florida is concerned. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, and, but they're also growing. They're also growing in California, apparently. Yeah, yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen any laying around while I've been out here, but then I haven't exactly been looking either. So. Well, they're they're normally, as I remember right, in North America, the harvest is like November to February, something like that. Hmm. And I don't think they have a real long shelf life once they're picked. But they're an interesting citrus fruit because they have no pith. So you just use Mm. the whole fruit. Which which I thought was going to be really neat. They're really good in Everclear with some sugar. Yes. I bet they would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like really good. <laughs> you just spike them with a fork and, and throw them in for a, for a month or so and, and sugar it up to suit, and um, yeah, it's very good. Hmm. Well, that's funny. The, the only place... It's mead, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not mead, but, uh, you know, it's. I, I would like to try it as a mead. I've, I've, I've never thought of really using it. Um, yeah, I've always been afraid of using too much citrus. So, well, I probably use too much. <laughs> I, I think I had four pounds or more, in, you know, normally a five-gallon batch. Which wow. normally that would be a low amount of fruit for me, but on kumquat, yeah, that, uh, appeared to be a lot. <laughs> did Did you open them up? Uh, no. Okay. No, Actually, no, I, they, were per, they were they were pureed, so you know I guess they were opened up. Oh, pureed. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, normally, I'd put them in whole, but I'd, I'd spike them. So you hit them with a fork or yeah. a toothpick a few times each one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that generally gives me the best results. Huh. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Mind you, yeah. as I say, I haven't tried this with with mead, but that would reduce the um, the interaction and and maybe get you a, a better flavour and more of the skin citrusy flavor yeah. than, the, than the acid coming through. I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah, because what, from what I remember from eating kumquats, the skin is actually sweet where the inside's super sour, right? At least the ones uh, I... From, uh, the ones I had were not super sour. I wow. think most of, this, uh, most of the at- acid, I think, was coming from the peel. Huh. Interesting. See, uh, over here, we are them inedible. That's why we don't sell them in the shops. Yeah, well, there's like two varieties of kumquats that are growing commercially, is from what I remember, you know, digging up trying to find out about them. Mm-hmm. One starts with an N, I forget the full name, but it's the more commonly growing one in North America. My dad used to talk about kumquats when we were growing up. I've only ever had them once or twice, and oh, God, it was years and years and years ago. But uh, I never thought about making a mead. Out of one of them, or several of them. Or well, whatever. you got to try all these unusual, there's all these unusual fruits, you know. It's like, there were a couple others I ran across that people had used in some, uh, in some uh, sour beers in South Florida last winter. You know, like, uh, let's see, what was the one? Jackfruit? Yeah. Grows, oh, yes. You know, yeah, uh, dragon fruit. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a whole bunch durians. of those that grow in South Florida, and it's like, oh, okay. Don't, yeah. don't talk to me about durian. <laughs> yeah, there was a whole thing on got me for, like, I don't know, it was probably 10, 15 years ago, and there was a whole thing. Everybody was going, we're going to make durian mead, and everybody's going, damn, those things smell like ass. What are you going to make mead out of those? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I've never it's, smelled yeah. or been anywhere near a durian fruit, but I'm I'm very curious just to see one because I've, I've never I've eaten been around. One. They're, they're very unpleasant. Are they, I, I, I was told that like if you plug your nose, it actually tastes pretty good. <laughs> so I was okay. So I I actually thought they tasted better than they than they smelled. Well, that's what I've heard. Is sorry, the other way around. Sorry, I, I thought they smelt. I oh, thought they okay. smelt better than they tasted, and I really offended people when I said that. <laughs> 
Because I heard that. I heard I'm, I'm going to go them. run out and get some of those right away. Oh, yeah. 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 Supposedly the smell will make you gag. That I mean, it's like just, just. Oh, awful. good. Yeah. yeah they're in, just... in Southeast Asia, where they're grown, they're, 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 there's, a, there's a phrase that they say they um, they taste like heaven, but they smell like hell, and they're actually okay. uh, banned in on cruise ships, in hotels and shopping centers and places like that because the smell gets into the air conditioning and gets circulated through everyone's room. <laughs> and and they actually have a ban. You're not allowed to take them into any accommodation center, <laughs> basically. Um, and, and, yeah, so if you want them, you can eat them, but you've got to be outside. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, now I have yeah, a, they're pretty feral. I had I, a, pom- I, I, I had a I, pomegranate, uh, Melamel, that... Uh, that um, I got from Rabbit's Foot, and uh, he has it. He has it on tap, and he, pour, he he set up a crawler of it for me. And I was sharing it with my friends the other night. You want to talk about tart? Oh my gosh! Yeah, it, it was amazing. I've, I've used that. I've done pomegranates a number of times. A lot of times with other fruits. They're, it's kind of a nice, nice uh, fruit, I think, for mead. Well, yeah, this was, I mean, once you had to be ready for tart. I mean, and Mike told me this. He's like, super tart. Before you try it, it's really tart. And I tried it, and I'm like, wow, Mike, this is really tart. And he's like, dude, I told you. And um, But we had it, um, and I, when I was pouring it, we were eating, um, we had gotten some Mediterranean. So we had lamb kebabs and hummus and flatbread and some grape leaves. Mm, and, yum. Yeah, it was really good. And, and then we had, of course, baklava <laughs> for dessert. And so we're, like, drinking this and eating baklava. It was perfect with baklava. Baklava. So if you've got a really tart mead, baklava goes with it really well. <laughs> oh, well, huh? Yeah. Gee, I, instead of back sweetening the mead, we'll just you know, baklava, use the honey dude, and yeah. the dessert. <laughs> huh. Maybe we could ferment baklava. There we go. Well, there's a thought. Bobby Slant there says Phil Clark uh, made that mead, and he had it, and he says it took seven years for it to be drinkable. <laughs> Ooh, it's a seven-year mead, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of more into instant gratification. Sorry. Yeah, I am too. Or at least um, more instant than that, anyway. Wow. Yeah. Do, yeah. You, uh, do you mostly make hydromels? I heard you. No, it I, I make. Times. It sounded like that was a well. I, I, for you. I find that I, I find making those. I can, you know, I can drink, you know, a pint glass of it, and they'll be functional. If I do that with yeah. the the sack mead it's you know game over you're right don't 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 plan on getting out of the couch just watch another episode of game of yeah Thrones. yeah exactly <laughs> and you know i even lately on beers i you know went to making a lot of session strength kind of beers just because you can drink more yeah oh bobby says that mead was pre-sna so you're probably you're probably in better shape than than that one was yeah, I, I didn't. I I have not found pomegranate to have any problems, you know, fermenting. Cause, and I find uh-huh. that uh, palm brand extra uh, juice that you can find in you know places like Costco, mm-hmm. it it works really good. Yeah, well, I mean the one that the one that um, Mike made. I mean, it's selling it commercially, obviously, but we're talking like a month turnaround time. He's got his process mm-hmm. nailed, so you know it's in and out and yep. ready to go. In a month or so, and uh, you know, I mean, it's it's good. I liked it very much. It just, you know, you had to be aware of the fact that this is a tart meat. It was designed that way. Yeah. You know. Well, did you uh, get the, my uh, sour meat I served at nationals at the the meat panel? No, because I haven't been to nationals. Oh, okay. So at the HA nationals this uh, June. In the mastering mead panel, and it was let's see who was on there. there was yeah, I was Chris waving Sack, at you myself. guys as I went by. Then I was actually on my way to North All Dakota. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you could have stopped, but anyway, it, you know, we we had Kurt Stock, myself, Steve Fletty, Thomas Eidner, and Matt Whitey, all locals mead maker of the years. Mm-hmm. And the the mead I made for that event, I just said, oh, I'm going to you know show people that you know perhaps. The, the envelope goes a little farther than you thought. So I, I made a brag. It okay, you know those are rare, but okay. But my base style was a kettle soured beer. Ooh, interesting. So I, so I made a ten, about a ten forty or so OG, you know, sour beer like I normally would. Held it, you know, 
around 90 or whatever. I'd have to look at my notes where the actual temperature was. Held it until I 